I'm Andrew Shoblin. I'm Trackside Engineering Director here at the team and I've just got back from uh, Melbourne in Australia and I'm here to review your questions that you've kindly sent in using the Pure Pit Wall. So thank you Chandeep for your question which was all about the, the delta time and how we calculate it. That's the difference between a car staying out on track and a car coming into the pit lane. Now if we look at the pure pit wall here you can see one of the first cars to stop was Kimi. Um, Kimi was doing that trying to pull Lewis in. We knew that Ferrari would do that having two cars up front and then there aren't many stopping and then suddenly you get this VSC and safety car period and all the cars are coming in to make the stop and that's because it's quicker to do that when there is a VSC or a safety car. So back to the question about how we actually calculate it. Well during the VSC all the cars on track have to slow down to a much reduced pace and that's to make sure that, that it's safe for the marshals who are going to be going onto the circuit working. And we get that profile from the FIA. They actually tell us how fast the cars have to drive and then the drivers are trying to stick within a few tenths of a second of that time. Now we know how fast the car can come into the pit lane because it's a 60 kilometer an hour limit. Um, the, the cars coming into the pits are also following that delta time until they get to the safety car line and then there's actually a period where they're free to accelerate, decelerate back down to the pit lane. So during the weekend we're collecting a lot of that data and it's never, it's never quite an exact science because you don't know how fast a car is going to be able to come through that pit entry, you don't know quite how closely they'll stick to the delta but it's essentially the difference between those two times, the one to come through the pit lane and the one to stay out on track on that reduced uh, speed limit. Now to LJ, so thank you for your question. Um, and that was about what are we going to do with the software to make sure that we don't have this, this problem again. So we identified that um, there, there was an issue with the software that was telling us that at that point Lewis was safe and that Vettel would drop out behind us and then obviously you saw what happened, Vettel dropped out in front when he came in for his pit stop. Um, and the issue isn't actually with the race strategy software that we use, it was an offline tool that we create these delta time laps with and we found a bug in that tool that meant that it gave us the wrong number. Now the number that we were calculating was around 15 seconds and in reality the number was slightly short of 13 seconds. So that was what created our delta and that was where we thought we were, we were safe, we thought we had a bit of margin and then obviously you saw the result, we dropped out and we were second place and it's very difficult to overtake and we couldn't get through. But how we deal with these sort of problems in the software is, is the same as if we had a reliability issue, if a bit on the car broke and it's really just about understanding everything that went wrong, gathering all the data um, and invariably it's never just one thing. So there's there's elements that we can do better with calculating that but also we've looked at it in future we're going to make sure we've got more margin because we want to be able to cover for Vettel doing an amazingly good in-lap to the pits or having an incredibly fast stop. Um, so with any of these things we just look at everything that went wrong, uh, work out how to solve it and then put the processes in place to make sure that we don't have a repeat. And Alan, so your question was about Sebastian accelerating as he came into the pit lane, then slowing down to the limiter line, and whether he was allowed to do that. Well, absolutely he is. Um, when you're on track following the delta time, you only need to follow it until you get to the safety car line. And as soon as they cross that safety car line as they come into the pits, they can go as fast as they like round that bend into the pit lane, and then they need to slow down to that 60 kilometer an hour limiter. So braking hard down to that, trying to lose as little time as possible and then just along the pit lane until their pit box on the limiter. Next question is from RNB44, whether that's 44 for Lewis we don't know, um, and his question was about uh, Lewis's engine, whether, whether there might be any damage to it from pushing up behind Vettel in those closing laps. Well you may have heard us on the radio um, telling Lewis that it was getting hot which is just the fact that when the, when the cars get so close you don't get clean air going into the radiators keeping it cool and it did get quite close to limit temperature but we're monitoring all these limits very closely and you can run up to them you just got to be careful that you don't run over them and in Lewis's case we were okay we were just up around limits um, you heard Lewis on the radio say that he can't get by and he was going to save the engine well at that point he just backed off he was cooling the car um, he can turn down the power of the engine so it's not having to work so hard but we're pretty confident the engine will be in good shape 
Um, we're limited in, in what tests we can do because we can't actually run the engine. We're not allowed to, uh, apart from when we get to Bahrain. Um, and in terms of where it will be used next, well, at the moment, that's Lewis's only engine that we have in the engine pool. So he's going to be running that engine in Bahrain and in China, and we'll be monitoring them as we always do, just ensuring that everything is, is continually OK. This question's from Andrew on whether Lewis could have pushed harder to uh, get closer to Sebastian so that when Sebastian stopped, he would have dropped behind Lewis instead of in front on the BSC. Um, and the simple answer is that we could have pushed the car harder. Um, at this point of the race, we were still following a fuel profile that meant we were having to do some saving of fuel. Uh, Melbourne's a very difficult race to do on that 105 kilogram limit. And also, we were being a bit cautious with the tyres. And because the team thought that we were safe anyway, we thought that Sebastian was going to drop behind us, we weren't telling Lewis to push any harder. And that's really one of the, well, you know, one of the big frustrations that we have coming away from Melbourne, is the car was clearly quick enough to win the race. And if we'd managed the race differently, we could have won it. Um, but at this point, we were lulled into this false sense of security, and we didn't have Lewis driving as fast as he could. So, that's, uh, as we mentioned earlier, one of those areas where in future we need to make sure that we've got more margin and we need to make sure that all of these tools are giving us the right instructions so we can put the car in, in the place where we need to on track. We've got a question from Blake to do with whether Lewis could have driven through the pit lane and not stopped like a drive through. Um, now, I don't know whether, Blake, you're meaning this was when we had the BSE because obviously Lewis was already behind and if he'd come through the pits would have would have still been behind and the and the other problem is there is a regulation that says when there's a BSC you're only allowed to drive through the pits to change tires so the the short answer is no no we couldn't have done it certainly wouldn't wouldn't have helped Lewis at all because coming through the pits was was still quite a bit slower than staying out on track Beerin has been in touch with a question about Valtteri's projected finishing position. So you saw that Valtteri had that crash in Q3. That would have put him 10th on the grid because he hadn't set a lap time. Uh, but we also damaged the gearbox in that crash. So that was another five place penalty. So then he was starting the race in 15th. Now, overnight on Saturday, we're running hundreds of thousands of simulations and each one is like a mini race. And we look at what happens, whether they can overtake, lots and lots of different scenarios. So when we talk about projected finishing position, it's really a probability. And P8 was actually the, the most probable finishing position for Valtteri. Um, his very, very best results would have been around P6. And equally, there were other scenarios, depending on when all the other cars stopped, that would have put him just out of the points, probably P11 or P12. Um, but realistically, when you saw how hard it was to overtake in Melbourne, uh, that sort of P8 position was about the best that he was going to do. Thank you very much for all your questions today. We're going to be back with the Pure Pitwall after the Bahrain Grand Prix, answering more of your questions.